Welcome back. My next guest is Dr. Walid Abu Jaudi, who's a general surgeon, and I know him as Dr. AJ, and most of your patients know you as Dr. Okay. AJ. And Ms. Peggy Wheeler, who is a breast cancer nurse navigator. Welcome in. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we talked a little bit about screening for breast cancer. Tell us a little bit about breast cancer statistics. Who gets it, and what are the risk factors for getting breast cancer? Well, we know that breast cancer is the most common cause of cancer among women in the United States. And we know that it's the second leading cause of death after heart disease. So the impact on our society is huge with breast cancer. And we also know from statistics that it's about, about 240,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer, invasive breast cancer, a year. So that's a lot of women that we have to uh, treat. Now, with the advances in mammography and other modalities that Dr. Masters talked about, as well as other treating modalities, uh, whether surgical, uh, uh, chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, we know that we have made an impact on survival with breast cancer. So survival is, is if you screen it, you get it early, you've got a great chance to live a normal life. Yes. Now, what are, what are some risk factors? I mean, is, is family history, genetics important, uh, other things that may make you a higher risk for breast cancer? Well, 15% of breast cancer is genetically predisposed, which means it's passed on via genes from your mom or dad uh, to, the, uh, to the patient, whether it's a, a female or male. We, we see breast cancer in males as well, although it's not as common. So definitely a big risk factor that we can make a difference if we make a diagnosis earlier by testing the patient. So when we see a patient, we always discuss the family history of breast or ovarian cancer because we know that's a genetically predisposed uh, component. Uh, we, also have, we also talk about radiation exposure, which puts the patient at high risk of having breast cancer. And then we talk about the origins, we know that some ladies from uh, Ashkenazi Jews descent are at very high risk for developing breast cancer as well. But it affects all women regardless of race, African American, white, Asian. We see women from all different genders, uh, from all different races. Well, now, we talked about doing screening and, and some of the risk factors, but sometimes women can do their own breast exams or fill a lump or their doctor will fill a lump. What are some warning, physical warning signs that you think, ah, oh, this is maybe not right? Well, most of the breast cancer that we see is made um, based on mammography, uh, just the screening or, or diagnostic uh, exams that Dr. Masters discussed. Um, in some instances, we may have uh, patients presenting with lumps or masses that they felt themselves. Um, usually they are painless, they don't hurt. Sometimes they may have skin changes, sometimes they have changes in the nipple or the areola or even bloody discharge. So it's very important to perform a cell breast exam and more important to have the screening mammogram. Now you mentioned all those things and if men get those symptoms too, they should be evaluated just like women though even though it's rare. Exactly. All right, so let's say they've been through the mammogram, they've got the diagnosis of breast cancer, they come to see you. Tell me what happens. Well, when, they make, when, when we have a diagnosis, usually the patients come in with a diagnosis that's already been made by um, the modalities that we have in radiology as well as a biopsy, and that's usually a core needle biopsy where we take enough tissue that we send to the pathologist so we have a diagnosis. And usually when I see a patient, I ask Peggy Wheeler, who's our breast cancer nurse navigator, to be present with me in the room because it's important for her to, to, to hear what we're talking about so she can reiterate that after I leave the room and discuss the options with the patient because we use a multimodality approach anymore when we treat a breast cancer. And that modality could be uh, surgical, uh, using radiation oncology, medical oncology, reconstructive surgery, as well as referrals to genetic counseling and testing. So it's a multidisciplinary approach that we utilize. So uh, it's overwhelming when, it fir when, when first the patient comes to see me and trying to absorb all that information, at the same time scared, knowing that here I have a diagnosis of breast cancer that I know will change my life and the life of people around me. Um, so when we talk to the patient, we take a complete uh, history um, to, to evaluate the risk factors. So we discuss uh, the family predisposition as far as who has uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. We talk about the breast pathology that the patient may have had from previous biopsies that would place the patient at higher risk for having breast cancer and then perform a, a complete exam. And we focus mostly on the breast as far as feeling any masses, uh, seeing any changes, because 
really what we're trying to, to decide is what, what's the stage that the patient presents in, what's the clinical stage of that breast cancer. And that's very important because we know that we can make a difference when we see patients early on. And fortunately, anymore we're seeing patients with early stages of disease. Uh, and then we sit down usually in the conference room and Peggy sits with us and we talk about the pathophysiology. We discuss the path report because there's, there's a lot of information. Breast cancer is not one size fits all. There's different kinds of breast cancer and the patient needs to understand what kind of breast cancer do I have? Because more often we see patients going on the internet researching breast cancer and they don't understand that this doesn't apply to me. I don't have that kind of breast cancer, but they come in scared because they looked at the statistics and, and they're definitely scared when they see some of those numbers. So we, we show them pictures, we talk about the pathophysiology, we talk about what the pathology means. Is this invasive cancer? Is this a ductal carcinoma in situ, a lobular carcinoma in situ, or lobular cancer? We talk about the receptors and the importance of having all of these components that really may impact the, the treatment as well as the prognosis and the survival. Now, he, he mentioned you a lot, Peggy, so he may gives yes. you a lot to do. Tell me what the nurse navigator does because there is a lot of fear in that room and, and you can help navigate that patient. Tell me exactly what you do. Yes. Well, I think it's um, at, at Baptist, um, when the patient's first diagnosed in mammography department, a letter goes out to that patient to let them know that a nurse navigator is going to be present at this appointment with their surgeon. So they're expecting me when, I, when I'm there, and I think that's comforting for them to know that there is going to be an extra set of ears in the room with them and their family. Um, so then um, I'm present, um, as Dr. A.J. described, during the examination um, and during the consultation that the patient has with Dr. A.J. or the surgeon that they're seeing to talk about, you've got breast cancer, now what do we do? And so it's helpful for the patients to have me there after they have spent the time with the surgeon to just sit down with them and their family and answer that question. Okay, now what do we do? And to start that conversation, it's so important for the patient to understand exactly what the breast cancer they have is. And so I draw pictures, tell stories, do whatever it takes to help that patient truly understand what their breast cancer means. Um, to them, so we write their own personal story. And help them navigate the system, which can be complicated. So once you've got a diagnosis, one of the things that, one of the things of treatment, not the only way, but one of the things you do is, is surgery. And not one surgery type fits all, I would suspect. So tell me, tell me a little about <laughs> the surgical option. Well, the majority of the patients we see are candidates for surgery as the optimal first option that we do. You know, there are other options that we discuss as well, but we talk mainly about breast conserving surgery, which entails doing a lumpectomy where we remove the cancer, preserve the breast, and then radiate the breast following that, versus a mastectomy where we remove the whole breast. And we talk about the pros and the cons of both of these options. You know, these options are available everywhere on, in the media, TV, and the patients are familiar with them, but not enough to know what, it, what each option entails. So with the lumpectomy, we talk about taking the cancer with, it, with a good margin while preserving the contour of the breast and having an acceptable cosmetic result. And we talk about radiation and how, how that impacts as well the cosmesis of the breast with radiation and, and how long that takes. And then we talk about mastectomy, which usually does not entail radiation, and the effect, uh, the, the image that, uh, that uh, we want the patient to understand. You know, this is not a small surgery. Um, you know, with lumpectomy, it's still the most common procedure we do in this country. Uh, it's the least invasive. It's an outpatient procedure. It's done in an outpatient center. Uh, it has less risk than a mastectomy, which is a longer procedure done in the main OR with an overnight stay, longer recovery, more complications. At the same time, when we discuss uh, mastectomy with the patient, we discuss doing a contralateral mastectomy, which is an another option that we provide the patient along with reconstruction where the plastic surgeons can come in and, ha and do immediate reconstruction or delayed reconstruction. Great information. We appreciate you coming in. We hope our patients don't have to see you, but we know they're in good hands if they do. We'll be right back.